Hey, this is John, and it's Sunday, October 8th, and I've got some bad news from Telltale Games. The Malibu-based maker of narrative-driven games such as The Walking Dead, Batman, and most recently The Expanse, announced on Thursday that it had laid off some of its team due to current market conditions. In a release posted on Twitter, the Malibu, California-based company thanked its now former employees for their dedication and reassured its customers that all projects currently in development are still in production. This announcement comes on the heels of what was supposed to be Telltale's triumphant return after the old company filed for bankruptcy and closed its doors in 2018. The brand was subsequently acquired by LCG Entertainment and on July 27th of this year published its version of The Expanse, the popular hard sci-fi series currently owned by Amazon, with plans to follow up next year with a long-awaited sequel to The Wolf Among Us, The fantasy IP, which is owned either by Bill Willingham, DC Comics, or is in the public domain. It's a little confusing at this point. Uh, The link to our explainer on this little copyright kerfuffle is in the comments. Anyway, Telltale's statement was made shortly after cinematic artist Jonah Wong, a Telltale employee who posts under the handle J. Jonah Jonason, announced on the social media app The X, formerly known as Twitter, that... Telltale laid off most of its staff early September. He wouldn't talk about the status of the Wolf Among Us sequel due to his non-disclosure agreement with his now former employer, but added that the layoffs happened in the wake of Telltale parent company acquiring Flavorworks Interactive Studio, a UK-based studio that appears to create interactive full-motion video games. So the question no doubt on your mind is, is Telltale's history repeating itself? Well, looking back... The company cratered back in 2018 because of a series of bad management decisions, a corporate work culture that led to stress and burnout on its team, failure to advance its tools with the times, and a deal with Netflix that went sour because the old company just couldn't deliver on time. But its change of ownership and the release of The Expanse a few months ago was heralded as a triumphant return in the legacy gaming media. Everyone was excited. All I can share with you is my perspective, and it centers on The Expanse. And particularly, it centers on The Expanse being not exactly a success. We at Coffee and Chocolate pre-ordered the game and played the first episode on the Xbox, and uh, we weren't blown away by it, but we were cautiously optimistic, I would say. And then the second episode came, and we couldn't actually download it even though we'd already paid for it and pre-ordered it. And in fact, it paid to have access early. I even talked about that a little bit on our channel. We finally got it to work, though, and then did a playthrough, which we recorded and uploaded here. There's a link for that one in the comments, too. And, well, our thoughts were a bit mixed. The interactivity wasn't that engaging. There were some quick-time scenes you had to maneuver through, but that revealed to us that the controls were a bit fussy in the first place. And overall, episode two left us kind of wanting more. The whole thing was a big fetch-a-bunch-of-objects quest. There was a romance option with a character named Maya, but quite honestly, it didn't quite fit in with how we were playing things with Drummer, the main character, so we didn't even explore that just because of the way we were role-playing it. Um, And at the end of the day, a two-hour playthrough for a single episode for really just a bunch of fetch scenes and a quick-time event, and no real major choices that really impacted the game, it was kind of weak, we thought. The rest of the episodes became available in subsequent weeks, and we downloaded them all, but to be frank, episode two was the last one we played. We didn't consciously kick it to the curb. We just never went back to it. Baldur's Gate 3 came out, and then we started replaying Deus Ex Human Revolution, and then we began our long-delayed playthrough of Hogwarts Legacy. Oh, and I still have a big backlog of videos from our Detroit Become Human playthrough, which is completed, but we still have to edit and publish them. And to be candid, I don't know if we're going to come back to it, The Expanse. I mean, we're big fans of narrative-driven games here. That's the main focus of our channel. And we've played a lot of Telltale games like Back to the Future, Minecraft Story Mode, Borderlands, Guardians of the Galaxy, especially when we were in pandemic lockdown. We also started playing some other interactive games like the Wales Interactive FMV titles like Five Dates. Personally, I used to play LucasArts games when I was a kid. Games like Grim Fandango. And even I even go back to the old Infocom text adventures like Zork and the Hitchhiker's Guide and Choose Your Own Adventure game books. We love these kind of narrative-based games. 
and we love sci-fi, and we love fantasy. If anyone's going to love The Expanse, well, we're probably the ones who will. But we kind of didn't. The backstory was solid, but that wasn't on Telltale. The graphics looked a little tired. The games themselves weren't that interesting. It just didn't seem like there was much happening in them. And if we feel this way, well, I can't imagine they're shipping a lot of copies, especially with that strange thing they were doing where instead of shipping all five episodes in one go so that players could just binge them, they dripped them out one every two weeks. And that was a strange decision. Because they'd already gone gold. There wasn't anything left to do. So it wasn't really surprising to hear that on September 21st, Telltale announced that with the release of the series' final episode, Europa's Folly, that they were dropping the price of the deluxe edition by 35%, and the standard edition by 40%. You know, barely a month or two out and they're already dropping the price. How's that look? Well, now, and you may now ask, well, wait a minute, what's the difference between deluxe and standard editions? This is a Telltale game. It's not like you get a special porcelain Glock 7 if you pay more. Um, no. In this case, if you bought the Deluxe Edition, you were supposed to get early access and a whole fifth bonus episode, which seems to me a little bit weird. Do you mean the main story arc involving your main character, Drummer, um, was only four episodes, and then there was a fifth kind of random one you just did that was optional? That's some electronic art-style day-one DLC strategy going on there, guys. I don't know. The bottom line for me is this. If this was 2018, when The Expanse was a hot, fresh IP and standards and games were, I'm just going to say it, a bit lower, this might have done well enough. It, it wasn't perfect. They had much better offerings. But okay, I guess I can kind of go with this one, right? But it's 2023, and we're sitting on the far side of the moonshot that was known as Detroit Become Human. And whatever you want to say about that game, it's a polished, enjoyable thought-provoking story with a branching narrative that rivals one of my all-time favorite choice-driven games, the decade-old and very unrelated Alpha Protocol. And if anyone who knows me knows that that's high praise indeed. We actually played Detroit Become Human and Expanse back-to-back a little bit. And let me tell you, Expanse can't touch Detroit. Not the acting, not the story, not the graphics, and not the overall narrative structure. And then when you throw in that The Expanse was released in a summer with AAA titles launching left and right, starting with Hogwarts, Starfield, Baldur's Gate 3, Final Fantasy, the list goes on and on and on. I guess I can kind of see why they had some problems, huh? So that brings me to this acquisition that Jonah mentioned of Flavorworks. Flavorworks is also an FMV, a full motion video shop. They apparently published a thriller called Erica for iOS, PlayStation 4, and Windows machines back in 2019. I personally had never heard of it until now. Might give it a try in the near future. But it's interesting that Flavorworks was purchased right before these layouts. It's a suggestion that Telltale's future direction might just be with more FMVs. It's certainly a suggestion that Telltale's future direction might be changing a little bit. They might be heading more toward FMV games than traditional animated games that they've been creating. At the very least, it sounds like management is aware that there's an issue and they're trying to do something to change things up. In the meantime, though, it does sound as though Telltale is moving forward with its planned release of The Wolf Among Us 2 in 2024. Um, Jonah was very vague in his posting on the X about whether anything bad or good was happening there. Almost a little bit too coy, if you ask me. But that is what it is. In the meantime, I hope Telltale comes up with some really cool stuff. Maybe we will get back to The Expanse after we get through the rather large quantity of really cool games that we have in our, uh, in our archive ready to go. Did you enjoy The Expanse? Do you think Telltale moving forward to FMV is a good idea? Let us know in the comments below. And please, if you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe. Thanks a lot.